Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Every week I bring in a new business and actually this time I have a returning visitor. I have Kevin with Kevin Cypher Photography and Kevin, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yep. Why don't you just briefly tell everybody, uh, you know, what it is that you do? Um, so I'm a professional photography. I uh, specialize in uh, event photography, green screen photography services, um, and I also do a lot of corporate product and illustration photography. Okay. Well, today I want to touch on uh, the corporate side of photography because last time you were here, we gave some uh, consumer tips on how to hold the camera okay. and whatnot. But today, why don't we talk about um, headshots? I mean, if someone wanted to do their own headshot, how would they do it? And, you know, why is it so important? Okay. Well, um, a headshot is, is definitely is definitely important, especially smaller businesses now. They're trying to um, start ups. They're trying to save a little bit of money. So doing it yourself is a possible is a good possibility. Um, so there are probably three. There are a lot of um, different tips I could give, but there are probably three really key elements to making a good headshot on your first try. Um, the first is just the focal length of the lens. So I have a, I have my camera here. Um, I would I would say that you'd want to use a portrait focal length. So something between uh, 70 millimeters and 135 would be a um, a medium telephoto lens, and that would make an excellent portrait lens. It's cell phones, cameras like this, uh, they make great pictures, but their focal length is usually a wide-angle lens, and they don't make for good headshots. Second thing I would look at would be your light source. Um, if you're just taking them yourself, you don't need to buy a bunch of lights. It's, it's definitely helpful. Just a nice big window um, light, a soft window light, um, and you also want that light source to just be one um, color source. So a window light is daylight balanced, and turn off all the other lights in your in the area because you're going to get funky colors and things like that. So just one big light source is an excellent way to go. And then the third thing to consider is the background. You don't want to be right next to the background. You want your um, subject to be at least probably three, three feet from the background. You don't want a brick wall in that background. You want something that's um, just a, a, singular, a singular color or muted colors, kind of like a, um, like a cloudy sky looking background. That's what the, you'll see in the back of professional photographers is a fake background that looks like something out of focus. Right. Well, and, and you, the viewers, you can't really tell, but actually our background here is probably about 10 feet behind us. And what we do is even in the video world, we, we're concerned about shadows. And obviously in headshots, you don't want to have a nasty shadow. Yeah. And another, just a really easy one to do, uh, you know, the common mistake is to mistake a headshot for a mug shot. Um, a mug shot is right against the wall. It looks terrible. You've probably never seen a good police mugshot. So think about that too. You don't want somebody right against a wall and you especially don't want a brick wall background. That's just, it's very busy. It's not very clean and it doesn't look professional. Okay. All right. So let's go into, um, switch gears and go into product photography a little bit. You know, okay. you have a product, you want to show it online or whatnot. What are some tips or, you know, what are some benefits of product photography? Okay. Well, it's an excellent segue, Jeff, because in today's world, the service industry, your people are your product. So headshots are really a, a type of product photography. Um, one of the things that they that it does um, is it makes that person it makes the product more familiar to your customer, and it increases the visibility of that product immediately. You can picture a product in a catalog. Customer going through it, it makes the product not only visible; they know what it is, they know what the colors choices are, but it also familiarizes with them. If you have a really good um, product shot, you can uh, kind of get a sense of the textures of if it's fabric. You can get a sense of the size for it. A lot of times you'll, you'll see in product photography, they'll have a size comparison, something like a quarter or dime or maybe even bigger, a can, something like that. Um, and then the second part is it's portable. I mean, not all product are little things. You know, food photography is, you know, a plate full of food, but, you know, you could be selling cars. You know, you could be selling large equipment. Um, so your salesperson can't bring that with them. So sometimes it can be a way to introduce your product to your client, get them familiar with it, and that actually brings them into your store or your manufacturing facility in the case of large corporate product that the sales, that the, it's non-consumer at all. It's just business to business sales. Okay, so, so if I was a small business, let's say, because um, I think a lot of small businesses watch these webisodes, um, if I have a product, I mean, do I really need a higher a professional photographer. I mean, is it really going to increase sales? Well, a good example of this might be, you know, have you ever ordered anything off of a menu at a restaurant? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can think of, if you want to talk product photography, I mean, I recall going to Denny's and seeing the Grand Slam breakfast picture. Okay. 
So what they're doing there is it is you you it's increasing the decision making process for you because you're seeing that that beautiful photograph and you're going to make the decision faster. So that's going to help um, table turnover times because the orders are going to come in more quickly. And then the second part of that is they're probably highlighting the Grand Slam breakfast is probably one of their highest profit margins. So they're actually highlighting something that they're making more money off of. So it's a great way to increase your profit um, off of specific items. Okay. So so what if I had a, a bar or, or a restaurant uh, that people come to in the evening, not necessarily for breakfast? I mean, would you um, like that the same way or how would that work? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So with the Denny's uh, menu, that example we just gave, um, that's going to mimic morning light. It's going to evoke an emotion in there you're you're not aware of. So something like um, and that's that's a product that's a product photograph, meaning that it's you know shot on a white background. It's not really in a in a place or a setting. Whereas something like the burger, let's say you want to upsell burgers. You you know that person's going to come into your restaurant and they're going to buy a beer. Well, then they see this beautiful hamburger on the bar, it's an, it gives them that mood of that night scene, the bars in the background, that would be a product illustration. Now that, that person's going to think about buying that burger. He came in for a beer, you just upsold him for $10, he's going to order a burger and fries. And now not only has that increased your um, profits, but also it's increasing the tip amount that the wait staff is going to have for that. Instead of just having two beers, they now have a beer Two beers, a burger, and fries. So it's a win-win for everybody. The yeah. customer, the waiter, yeah. and, and the, the owner. The customer, if they're not hungry, they're not going to order it anyway. So this is just helping them uh, spend the money at your restaurant instead of coming in for a beer and then going to, a, to the next place you know, or going hitting up the fast food restaurant on the way home. You're providing them convenience, and that's worth the extra money that you're, you, you've spent on the professional photography and on your location. Right. So... Well, very good. Well, thank you for the information. And all of you out there that own a restaurant or some type of business, you really got to come and talk to this guy, Kevin. He knows what he's talking about. There's a whole bunch more information that we can go into, but we just don't have time here today. I will put his uh, website at the end of this video. And uh, feel free to comment below this video and share it with anybody else that you may uh, feel that would find it interesting. So that's it for this week. See you next time.